Ladies and gentlemen, K.J. Saga! Give me a hell yeah! Yeah! yeah, it is, yeah. Dude, I love your setup, bro. Your setup is awesome. Hell yeah, you got all kinds of cool sense going on there. Dude, thank you so much for joining. If somehow somebody's watching and just has no idea who you are, which is damn near impossible, could you please introduce yourself for us, let us know whereabouts in the world you are, and just plug or promote anything you got going on right now. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for having us. Uh... Anyways, uh, well, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> Jeez, that was crazy. <laughs> um, Had something stuck in your throat, huh? <laughs> I'm I'm KJ Saka, yeah, and I'm I'm uh, part of Pendulum, and um, this is my studio here. I got keyboards everywhere. I love freaking gear. I'm a gear freak. Got a drum set back there. Uh, I have mostly based my whole career off playing the drums. Got started really, really early. And two of the world with Pendulum, two of the world also just as solo artist, KJ Saka. And I've toured, toured around a lot extensively with Elenium and have founded a big group with Excision called Destroyed. And uh, toured mentor. Uh, artists from all over the world trying to help their grow their careers as well and i just redid the floors in my uh house awesome freaking diy D Ex excellent diy 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 and um yeah that's me that's my elevator pitch that is a great one hell yeah Dude, first I want to start off by saying God bless you for giving us Immersion. It's my absolute favorite EDM album of ever created. Uh, what what was it like when when you first joined? Did you have any idea the impact that Pendulum would have on the drum and bass community when you joined? Did you have any idea? I did actually because um, I was a fan of Pendulum before I joined. Pendulum was kind of just growing in in my mind um, before I joined. I heard Vault, uh, Vault, and and a bunch of the the older tunes, um, and I started playing some of the Pendulum. Uh, what really got me interested in Pendulum was their crossover with rock music. I really, really dug that. When In Silico came out, I was like, wow. Here's this awesome drum and bass group, and they're actually playing on festival stages and playing drum and bass. Because I saw like um, Ronnie Size live, but they didn't have a drummer. I saw um, London Electricity live with the Jungle Drummer. That was really cool. And um, there was a band that opened up for for Ronnie Size way back in the day. Oh my goodness, that must have been 2000. 2003 <laughs> really long time ago uh right when ronnie size came out with represent so i've been in the drum bass for a really long time and then um it wasn't that hard to to meet everybody you know it's 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 not that difficult to to approach somebody like on instagram these days and so i approached pendulum which was rob swire um on myspace back in the day maybe 2007 or so we started collaborating or uh, I sent him beats basically, and we were trying to make something happen. I spent I sent beats to Spore, London Electricity, and we sparked a whole bunch of, of music together. Um, and landing my first sample pack on on uh, um, uh, Hospital Records, sent my my beats, my raw beats, just five minutes of me playing in the studio to all these drum and bass producers, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And it was like really successful. I'm like just penetrating the market. And I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Like, this is actually, this is working. And uh, Rob and I started having some rapport. We met um, at, uh, when I was playing with BT, the legendary freaking BT um, trance artist uh, at um, Ultra Music Festival way back, 2008 maybe, or something like that. And um, I met Rob and Gareth from 
uh, inverse from pendulum back in the back in the day we had a rapport and then and then silence and then Rob calls me up almost out of the blue and he's like we want you to join pendulum wow what a, I yeah. love how elaborate you are in the story too like we get every little detail and that's that just makes it so much more special I tried to make it go fast but I had to give you just a little bit of it because it's juicy good stuff I don't know and, and it's uh, it's a big it's a big deal for my whole career and um, and for pendulum fans and things too. I have another question for you. Then I'm gonna let JB ask one. He's my co-host today. Uh, regarding what up, JB? <laughs> regarding regarding destroyed. What what is the amount of time that went into creating the costumes, and how long does it take you to to actually get fully set to be able to play? And regarding like the entire set stage and everything. What what is the time consumption that goes into that kind of process? All right. Well, a couple of different questions, and I'll give you a couple of different answers. Um, so Jeff, Sean, and some of his art directors um, came up with the original concept, and it took a while. Um, I don't think they had that they had some sketches of the band. I don't think we had the logo yet the big like crazy freaking logo thing or the typography uh when he asked me if he, he or he told me about his idea and wanted to know if i wanted to 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 do it or, or actually he just like he was like he's like can you take some, he, he was like can you help us can you take us live i was like this is something that i know exactly how to do and he's like well, sick and then so that that was the missing I was kind of like the missing link of his of his big idea. And then uh, I think we spent about another six months or so de designing the costumes that took quite a while. And it was about three months of solid work inside Ableton making the entire show. That was my biggest contribution to destroyed is um, making the entire show playable. And then making VIPs of all of our tunes, set design. Jeff would he he would love to take like 60 tunes. And we only had like 25 tunes, and the rest of the tunes were other people from other people, our our homies. And they would send us stems, and he would just make a kind of like a DJ mix. He's like, I think the the shit set could flow really good like this. And then I took all the stems, and then figure out how. Jeff and Sean were going to play their bases all inside Ableton, trial and error like crazy, made the set probably five different times, had to scrap the whole thing, start over again. And uh, and then the whole show took a really long time, too. The lighting, the backdrop, and, you know, it, I always said it kind of looked like Castle Grayskull, some of that facade on the drum riser. At the, at the very beginning shows, it was like this big, these big rocks and things, and everything took a really long time. But some of the, some of it took like maybe only a week or two weeks, and it was like around the clock, 24/7, people working on that shit, making it happen. <laughs> Is there plans for Destroyed to play some, play some more shows in the near future? <laughs> I have one answer that I've, I've boiled it down because so many people ask me still to this day all the time. I have one answer. Destroyed will never die. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. JB, uh, what you got for KJ? <laughs> KJ, what an honor. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, with that being said, I want to know, um, when it comes to all your performances, which one can you define as your most complicated or difficult uh, performance you've ever had? Good question. Like in the history of I, all of his projects? Yes, uh, all projects. Destroyed by far. By a by a by a long shot. Uh there was more riding on the line. Uh it started from inception. I was able to construct most of the entire show as far as musically, like inside Ableton, connected to our instruments. We had a bunch of tech people who wrote code and wrote awesome amazing people helping us a big team but and there was a lot riding on the line especially the very first show i had two laptops and 
it was just going to be an A and B machine, and everything was going to run off just one laptop, and the B machine was going to be the redundant uh, machine. If A failed, it would automatically switch to B. Everything would be good. Well, the set was so big that I had to split the set, and now I have to run A and B as both A machines. <laughs> and so... I fixed it, but for that first show, there was a big freaking button that I was that I had to press. And so when we got into our suits, um, we have these really thin glasses that that we put on, and then we put the helmet on. So we have two pieces of of, of plexiglass that we're looking through, and the the piece that's closest to our eyes is made to black out our eyes. So when the light shines into our helmet, no one can see our eyeballs in there. Um, so we can truly, you know, mm. hold up the, the, the concept that we are aliens, uh, shot down from the base cannon onto earth to save the people from earth and bring them up back with us through the base cannon. If anyone wants to go, I'll take that right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. So during the middle of the show, I'm like, and, and Jeff is like, you should totally do a drum solo in the middle of the show. I'm like. Hell yes, of course I want to do a drum solo. So I made, we, we constructed this set and right in the middle of it was my drum solo and I'm like, perfect, that's when I'm going to switch the machines. Uh, and all I got to do is press one button. But boy, I got to tell you, our very first show totally sold out at the uh, San Francisco, uh, I forget what it was, it was like 4,000 people we put like so much money into it. Oh my goodness! It was like way over budget. It it was the type of show where we we pulled out all the stops and spent tons of the budget to make this show a real spectacle. And that was filmed, and that was our show, our tour video that we sent to the promoters. And boom, we got gigs just like that. Uh, that 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 that's some uh, some useful knowledge for for any. Any DJ or performing person who wants to go on tour, that's how we did it, and I've I've duplicated that recipe, and it's worked every time. You make a tour video, and you send it out to some people uh, that you want to play shows with, and you're like, this is what the show looks like, and they're like, I'll take that. That looks hella good. That's some knowledge. Um, yeah. Of course, it helped that that the, that it was like sold out, too, but it doesn't have to be. Um it doesn't have to even have people there. You can just look at the show and you're like, that's sick. And when someone or a, mainly a, a, um, a buyer, a uh, promoter can visualize your set that then they're way more likely to book you. So yeah, started off DJ or anything like that, that that's, that's my recommendation. But anyways, <laughs> I was playing my drum solo and, and there was like this free and then there was a click track and the click track needed to be lined up with the next part and then all these drums changed and their guitars changed the MIDI changed and the lights changed and like and I just needed to hit that freaking button and I did hit the button on time but man I was just the thing about it is we can't see anything. Oh, it's so hard to see. It's so hard to freaking play. But I loved it. Just sweating freaking bullets because that that suit is so tight and so hot and so uncomfortable. <laughs> um, and we had these huge clawed stopper freaking boots, and I could like, I'm looking down and I can't see my pedals, and I'm trying to figure out where the freaking hi hat pedal is versus the bass drum. And I'm trying to play good, and. It was so funny because I had all these buttons and freaking pedal boards for them to do these filter uh, freaking sweeps and like distortion and so much shit. And I put it all out and it's all controlled by Ableton and everything. It was all freaking macroed and everything. And they get up there and they're just like pressing four freaking buttons at the same time. And we scrapped <laughs> so much of it because because we're in these freaking alien robot suits. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, can't, was, you can't see. Yeah, they can't see everything they're playing. They couldn't see all the pedals. I imagine with that, dude. That's a that's a fun story right there. Uh, KJ, what what makes you happy when you're when you're not 
playing in any of your projects? I know you did CES recently. How was that experience? And and just what what do you do on the side that hobby wise just makes you happy on a daily basis? Yeah, well, CES is great. Uh, I do multitude of like corporate events and drum shows, which are totally different than like festivals and and um, um, club shows and things throughout the year. So. Uh, the corporate event is it was CES, and Roland brought me out there. I'm the the U.S. artist ambassador for V Drums, Roland V Drums, which means I'm an artist and I play the drums. And sometimes they hire me to do awesome stuff, but uh, the exchange is they give me gear, they give me gear, and I've evangelized about how awesome Roland is for freaking 12, 13 years now, and. Same thing with Tama drums, Minel cymbals, sticks, uh, Mackie, um, Ro- Roland, uh, uh, um, not just drum uh, drums, but keyboards, uh, Ableton, and uh, so I do a lot of those events. Ableton will will have a workshop that is like officially Ableton, and then I'll come out as as a um, like they'll pay me to come out as as an artist ambassador for their brand, uh, but they mostly just want me to they never want me to sell the product because they already have all the salespeople. They just want me to show what I do and how I utilize the product, which is so cool. Um, all the plugin companies, uh, must have 30 partnerships with plugin companies too. It is a big part of who I am as a, um, it's a big part of my, my musical, uh, career doing that. Um, and, and j- uh, j- just, uh, on that same note, Jeff and I did uh, what was called the Bass Music Initiative, which was a really big thing for young producers. He pitched in $100,000, 10 grand cash for 10 winners. It was more or less a kind of a producer contest. Um, We we didn't want to use that wording, so we used initiative, which made the most sense. But uh, people would send in their – well, actually, it, it wasn't really a contest, really, because people would send in their tracks. Uh, and we would have to judge them, but it was about not just the track, but like, who is this person and how long have they been doing music? Why do they want this? Um, what kind of community are they from? And there was a lot of really awesome people with a lot of really cool stories about why they want to be a musician. And also a big criteria was, can this person, do we have faith that this person can persevere, can actually make it happen for themselves. And what are they going to do with the 10 grand? And what are they going to do with these freaking 50 plugins that they got? They got Isotope Suite, they got Ableton, they got all kinds of awesome stuff. But anyways, uh, what do I like to do um, that's outside of music? Man, I really enjoy working out. Uh, I've been really into calisthenics lately, which is uh, swinging on the bar, um, moving a little closer into like gymnastics stuff i don't want to hurt myself though i'm freaking 45 years old staying fit though staying in shape staying fit what i'm 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 in the best shape of my life um i really am yeah Yeah. and it feels good and it's not necessarily actually because uh when i was 18 years old how can i compare myself to when i was 18 years old if you're 18 you're 18 of course you're fit right (laughs) very true what what uh what mistake do you find most up and coming DJs or drummers that are trying to be in your position make on their musical journey. Like maybe, Let's maybe it's again. just not your place to say, Hey, don't do that. But you just, you observe a common mistake somebody makes. Yeah. So common mistakes that I have observed and like pitfalls, um, there's a there's there's tons and some of the common ones is people have kind of an expectation um, that it's gonna happen with a minimal amount of work and um, the truth of the matter is the truth is brutal and I think this goes for most industries or especially higher level industries uh, athletics. Uh, on a high level, music, acting, it's 1% of 1%. It is really freaking small percentage. And maybe we have, you know, all these friends that are really doing good, but, and that's great, 
that we know all these people that are doing really good. That's like actually amazing because a lot of us have friends that are doing good in the DJ scene and musicians and stuff. They're on stage and making it happen. Good Spotify numbers. Um, it still is really, really rare. And the people that you do know or yourselves who actually are making an impact and you're crushing your goals and you're, you're taking steps to further your career, it's pretty – it really is rare actually. And everyone should freaking pat themselves on the back every single day and count their lucky freaking stars too because it is an absolute rat race. It is not easy. All the stuff that I've done and all the stuff the pendulum does uh, has done, we still have to push every single day. What are we doing today? Uh, and what are we doing tomorrow? What does the tour look like? You know, just like constant activity. And so some of the pitfalls is is like I get a lot of comments where like, eh, you know. I just want to like show up with some USB sticks and then, you know, that sounds pretty cool. You know, like not, not do, you know, not show up with a drum set or a full band or anything, just like with some USB sticks. And I'm like, like that's easy. <laughs> like, no, like if you show up with some USB sticks, that means that that, that is really, it, it's the producer's instrument. That, that's what you do as a producer. It, that is your instrument to show everybody your music. Now, of course, there's DJs, too, who don't, don't produce, too. And um, that can, they can be very successful as well. But, yeah, it's just like it takes a lot of hard work. And a lot of musicians – this is a really big one. A lot of musicians don't work very much, actually. Like in, in my experience, a lot of times they're like, man, nothing's happening. I got no gigs. I'm like, well, what would you do today? Oh, I spend an hour – play my guitar okay what what else did you do i don't know well that, that, that's what i did i think i i, I wrote i wrote like a, a cool intro for my song okay well they if they don't treat it like a job and that's a big one it, you know like what about where's the eight hour day and how okay how are you going to pay your rent how are you going to pay your mortgage how are you going to get food for your dog how are you going to do it answer me that <laughs> And if people can actually dig up those answers, figure it out, like, well, I'm not making money right now from music, but I'm working my job. Oh, great. There's an answer. Like, okay, you are making it for yourself. And so, yeah, I was not going to be the poor kid growing up making 20 bucks on the weekly gig, and that's it. I had my construction job all through my 20s. I wasn't a professional musician until like 28 or so which seems super old for, for especially for some of the DJs who are young DJs who are coming up crushing festival stages right now at 21 years old. Um, but that taught me a lot of work ethic. My dad taught me something that, that stuck with me forever at a young age. He was teaching me carpentry and stuff uh, when I was like 14. And he's like, he's like, son, you got to work every day. <laughs> that was pretty much it. That's all he said. Son, you got to work every day. I believe what in that. Meant, yeah, he was talking about blue collar work. He's like, you do your hourly job every day, and you work. And um, and now that I've, you know, I've, uh, from an early age, I've I've gotten into entrepreneurship, making money for myself, um, and I still am working every day. And there's all kinds of different things in the music industry and other ways to get paid like while you sleep. Like I sell sample packs. There could be a whole bunch of sample packs that sell in the middle of the night. You know, That's not dollar for, for hours for dollars. And uh, yeah, so a long, long answer. It's a great answer. Uh, <laughs> we've got time for final questions and we'll let you go, Jay, uh, KJ. Excuse me. We really appreciate your time. JB. What is your final question for, for KJ? So when it comes to all of your your sample packs or your plug-in packs, whatever you have out, what do you think is the most important that any producer needs in their, their library right now of yours? Oh, of mine? Yes. Um, they need the brand new one that came out. That's what they need. Um <laughs> 
And that one is um, Your Brain on Drums. And, well, I like uh, that. Yeah. And uh, you need two of them, actually. Well, well, if you're an Ableton head, you, you, need, you, you need the one that's on the actual Ableton website. I have two official packs on Ableton website. One of them, uh, my latest one is called Matter Beats. And, but let's face it, if you're a producer who, who, who just grabs kicks and snares from Slice and that works for you, because that does work for a lot of people, that's fine. You might not need Matter Beats. But if you like to dive in and you like to, 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 to look at a kick drum that has maybe a, a bunch of different microphones on it and you like to tweak it and you like to kind of get your own sounds, be a sound designer and also understand some really juicy, complicated stuff that, that Ableton Live uh, has to offer, Matter Beats is the pack that you should get. Um, so if we go on Ableton's website and search your name, we'll be able to find that pack. Yeah, you got to go to Ableton.com and then go to packs. And then um, you could either type in Matter Beats or type in KJ Socket. Yeah, you probably uh, or just Google it. Just just go Ableton KJ Socket. It'll come right up. Excellent. Excellent. KJ, my final question for you, sir. And again, I appreciate your time so much is uh, what what goals have you set for yourself? in 2023 what would you like to accomplish oh man that's a great goal i mean i mean i mean i mean that's a great question um so um your personal challenges yeah okay so i i'm really big on fitness goals right now but uh but i'll just preface it um i i have some touring goals for kj zaka that are that are making big steps for those touring goals, some big touring goals with pendulum, uh, some big recording goals, some release goals. So like a full freaking master plan and bubble chart of my music goals. Um, and my workout goals are, they, they make me so freaking happy. Um, I'll drink a little bit of freaking jungle juice and I'll hit that freaking gym every morning. And it's amazing. I think there's this new pre-workout stuff that I got called like gorilla warfare or something like that. That's the jungle <laughs> juice. It just keeps me in the gym and it's freaking awesome. Whatever it freaking takes, you know, I gotta say, as long as it's not like bad for you and apparently this stuff's not bad, but anyways, um, my goal is to do the flagpole, um, which is yep, freaking with, totally awesome. With your legs out yeah. like that thing. Yeah. Yeah, you grab a pole and then your legs are like straight out, freaking hard. Another one is the planche, um, which it's kind of like a push up, and you lean way, way forward, and then uh, you lift your feet up, and so you're you're like hovering there, and you can do that on the ground or you can do that on on the uh, uh, bars, and that, and then the muscle up. I'm really, really close on the muscle up. The muscle up is basically. It's a pull up, but you pull all the way over the bar, and then you do a freaking dip, and oh. it's hard. Yeah, but it's more about technique rather than strength. Um, but but I, I'm a real light. I'm only 145, so I kind of got that the, the the physique to be able to do things like that. If you're a big guy and 200, 220. Th th those things might be a little more challenging because because it's body weight exercises. Those are my goals. Hell yeah, those are some great goals. <laughs> KJ, we, we appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. We look forward to the next invasion, whenever that may be. And uh, hopefully the the Pendulum Tour is, is fantastic. Stay safe on the road, brother. This is an absolute honor and pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. And we wish you the best of luck on those goals, sir. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Had a great time. Thank you. KJ Sargo! Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right.